Hi, I'm Chef Gail Sokol and welcome to my kitchen. Today it's all about chocolate pudding. Now, this was my favorite thing to have as a child and to be honest with you, it was the first thing I ever made as a five-year-old. I'm not kidding, a five-year-old. Oh my goodness. I used to pull the chair from the table to the cooktop and I used to make one of those little boxes of chocolate pudding by myself. Now my mother, you know, she, she wasn't a great cook. I love her dearly, but she wasn't a great cook or really didn't like to be in the kitchen, but she was aware of what I was doing. Um, and I never burned the house down. It was a miracle. But that was my first memory of making something wonderful in the kitchen. And of course it was from a box, but we're gonna be making it from scratch. But before we get started, I want you to click that notification button. I want you to become a subscriber. I don't want you to miss any of my tips or videos because they're awesome. And I love having you with me in my kitchen. It's really nice to have friends in while, while I make things in the kitchen. So although this isn't true baking, it is something that a pastry chef does and a baker does. This is a stove top custard. We're making it on a cooktop. We're not putting it in the oven like pot de creme or creme brulee. We are making this on the stove and it will thicken on the stove. So there's a lot of the tips and tricks. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to heat in a saucepan. We're going to heat one and a half cups of whole milk. All right. And I want to get that going. And let's bring that up. And this is one cup, uh, I'm sorry, three quarters of a cup plus a tablespoon of granulated sugar. So I have one and a half cups of whole milk and three quarters of a cup plus a tablespoon of granulated sugar. I'm putting it right in there. Now what I wanna do is I wanna whisk it. We, the whole goal of bringing this to a boil or a simmer just under a boil is to create a hot environment so that we can temper our eggs because our eggs are very temperamental. They do not like being heated quickly. They get very, very ornery and they curdle the nerve, right? When they curdle, it's gross. There's lumps. I don't like lumps in my custard. So, we are using just the yolk today. The yolk makes it even richer. So this is almost not just a pudding, but almost like a pastry cream. You could use this as a filling for a pie, like a chocolate cream pie, um, or I'm gonna put it in little cups and dollop it with some whipped cream, and that's gonna be awesome. So while I wait for this to come to a boil and my sugar to sort of dissolve in my milk, I'm gonna take my three egg yolks. I have saved my whites. You can put them in into a container, date them, label them, and put them in the freezer in an airtight container for a day you wanna make meringue, let's say. Or you can just do an egg white omelet. That's up to you. So I have three uh, egg yolks, uh, and I have one cup of heavy cream, because we're gonna make this rich. This is a nice, rich, rich, rich pudding. And then I have I'm going to whisk that up just a little bit, break up my yolks, and then I have four tablespoons of cornstarch, which is our thickening agent, and then I'm going to do three tablespoons of flour because I want this nice and thickened. So we're going to put that in here, and I'll, sh I'll tell you what the flour and the cornstarch do for the eggs. They actually are helpers. They sort of help us out. And in the wings, I have our chocolate, because it is chocolate pudding. There's no chocolate right now, but there will be. So I'm whisking this up until it's nice and blended. And then I'm bringing this up to a boil. And then I'm going to temper these guys. So I'm going to gently add the milk and sugar mixture very, very gingerly so that we don't curdle our eggs. They're gonna, if you ever go to a, a swimming pool in the summer and the water's like hell cold, right? Really cold. So you put your foot in, then you put your ankle in, then you put up to your knee. Well, 
I'm not one to dive in myself. So this is sort of acclimates the eggs so that they don't curdle. And the other thing that helps acclimate the eggs is actually the flour and the cornstarch. It actually elevates the coagulation temperature of those egg yolks so that they don't curdle as easily. And you can bring the whole mixture to a boil, which is what we're gonna do when we make our pudding. So this is about there. And I'm gonna keep my heat on and I'm gonna slowly acclimate them. So just a little bit in here, whisk, okay? And a little bit more, whisk. I know, I hear ya. We're coming back with the pan. Cause then you're gonna pour all of this container, uh, this big bowl uh, of eggs and milk and cream and thickening agents. We're gonna put it right back on the stove cause we want it to actually thicken really, really nicely, like pudding consistency. So our eggs are going, okay, all right, it's getting warm in here, but we're cool with it because we've acclimated to the temperature and our cornstarch and our flour are gonna help that along because when we pour this whole bowl full in back into this pot and bring it to a boil, the eggs shouldn't curdle. We're gonna bring it to a boil. Normally you don't wanna boil your eggs because they will curdle, but we have that protection we have that superpower, cornstarch and flour. So the starches will actually protect it from curdling. Now I'm gonna get all my milk in there and I'm just gonna give this a little wipe and then I'm gonna pour it all back in here. Yeah, I know you were all upset. My cooktop was all upset. I'm gonna pour that back in here. And afterwards, you wanna have a place for the custard that is not contaminated with eggs. So I'm gonna put it into my little, my little cups, but if I wanted to, I could actually put it in a big bowl too. But I want not that bowl, I want it in a clean bowl that has not seen any raw egg. We don't wanna cross contaminate. So make sure you either wash that uh, that bowl out or have somebody wash it for you because right now I'm not moving. I'm here and I'm sticking here like glue because I'm watching my custard so you can see it. All right, it's gonna get nice and thick in a minute and it's gonna take a minute or two. All right, I thought I might need this. I always have extra whisks just in case. And to make it chocolatey, we are going to have in the wings some chocolate chips. Uh, three quarters of a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips, two tablespoons of butter, unsalted. Uh, it doesn't have to be softened. And a couple teaspoons of pure vanilla extract that are amazingly fragrant. All right, so I'm getting this in here and I'm raising up the temperature. So you'd want to almost put it to a medium high on your cooktop. And you should feel very quickly that the whisk has a little bit more work to do to get through this mass of beautiful custardiness. And eventually things are gonna start thickening. So go into the corners, go into the corners, into the edges. I don't know if a circle, circular pan has corners, but edges. So that everything gets equally thickened at the same time. You don't wanna have any lumps. And you know what? If you ever did have any lumps, you can just put this through a sieve and your lumps are gone. So that's a little trick that I learned. And you learn a lot of different things when you're, when you're a chef and you're in pastry school. So you can see this is beginning to thicken a little bit. And if you took the cornstarch and flour away, you'd be making what's known as a creme anglaise, like a custard sauce, which is the basis for a, a unfrozen vanilla ice cream. And then what you would do is, you would actually, you can see how nice and thick that's getting. Okay. And then you wanna bring it to a boil for close to a minute, not quite, just close to a minute. And you'd wanna make sure it doesn't, oh, look at that baby. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Really nice and thick because you want to make sure that you kill this enzyme in the egg yolks. It's called amylase. And when you, 
you don't kill it because it's not alive, but when you destroy it, it prevents the starches from breaking, uh, from the, the custard from breaking down and getting really thin. So I'm just turning this down, all right, because it's way over a boil, and I'm just letting this get nice and thick, and you can see, look at that, isn't that gorgeous? So it's been boiling for close to a minute. As I've been yammering away talking to you, so now I'm gonna turn this off, and I'm going to bring it over here and put our beautiful accoutrement in it. So you can see here, I'm gonna put in the butter, two tablespoons of unsalted butter, the two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract, and I'm gonna put in my three quarters of a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips, and they can just be high quality chocolate chips, and I'm gonna stir it, and you're gonna see it all of a sudden turn into this gorgeous chocolate pudding. And you're gonna have to stir it a little bit. Oh, I just got a whiff of vanilla and chocolate. Mmm, not a bad thing, right? And look how gorgeous this becomes. Once everything is melted, then you wanna pour it immediately either into a large bowl and you wanna cover it. Now we're not gonna put it into a large bowl. I'm gonna make individual servings. And this should make, depending on how big your glasses are, you could put this in a nice wine glass to make a sort of a fancy dessert. It will set up more when it chills. Just gonna get everything blended in here. Oh, look at that. It looks thick now, but in the fridge it'll get like the chocolate pudding of your childhood. Mm, memories, right? Memories of my mother screaming at me, don't burn down the house, Gail. And I didn't, it was a miracle, but I didn't. So I'm gonna take my individual glasses, these are heat proof, and this is what I'm gonna do. So you can actually make as many of these as you have pudding for, or you can put them in an ups glass, like something you would put in a, for a martini. And when you put them into the individual glasses or into a bowl, a clean, a clean glass bowl or any type of a bowl, this would be, let's say, a serving, you want to cover them with plastic wrap, all right, put it directly on the pudding because there is a protein in dairy products, in milk and cream, called casein, and it will make a skin. And I bet there's some of you who just like me like the skin, so just leave off the plastic wrap. But you want to chill it just like that, so you want to fill all your little cups like that. It'll probably be about four to six of those little cups, or you can put it in one big bowl. Either way. And then when we come back, I'm gonna let this chill because it's sort of warm. Let it chill in the refrigerator till they get nice and cold, and we're gonna garnish them with some whipped cream and other things. I'll, I'll see you back. So my chocolate puddings have set and chilled in the refrigerator, and they are beautiful and nice and chilled. And now we're ready to top them. I thought some nice uh, whipped cream would be delicious. So I have a little spoonful of uh, cream that I'm gonna put on top. And then put on each one. Let's put a little more on. Let's not be skimpy with our whipped cream. And you can put them in any type of cup you want. I just had these cups and I thought they were really nice. So this looks like the runt of the family, so we need a little bit more there, right? And then I made these beautiful chocolate leaves. You can see they're beautiful. We're going to put one on each one. Aren't they lovely? And you can see I, I will put a link up to how to make these. They're super easy to do. And they really elevate any dessert you want. And then just a little sprinkling, just a little sprinkling of unsweetened cocoa powder. Just a, looks like the leaves are in the dirt, just a little bit. And it just gives it that, that je ne sais quoi. So I hope you make this delicious chocolate pudding. It will take you back to when you were a kid 
and you stole away in the kitchen and didn't allow your mother in the kitchen until you made chocolate pudding. And that's what I did at age five. So I hope you enjoy these. They're absolutely delicious. Become a subscriber. Until next time.